<laughs> hey people, Spring Puppet, and this is how to draw a neo traditional wolf. Serve you. Enjoy. Right, people, how to draw a wolf on the side view. Now, this is going to be sort of like half old school, half near traditional. Now, a little bit something in the middle. So, start off with do yourself a rectangle, but have like you know curved edges. Okay, roughly like so. Off the back here, get a nice big oval, about twice the size of this. So it comes sort of like this height, plus another one. Just random oval shape at the back up there. Nice circle in the middle. Two curves off of that. Circle at the bottom. Off the back of here, let's bring in two curves and one half curve at the top like so and it's just building up your basic structure so to start with I'm going to start with I think the nose is always a good position to start when it comes to wolves so start off with the nose I'm going to come back from this curve here bring this down and curve up so quite a long line, shorter towards the end. From there, curve up, going above this line. So you wanted to point up a little bit, and then come down. I'm lower than this curve, and then bring this up underneath, and leave it like so. Underneath it, bring a little curve. Come straight a little bit, and then once you get to about here, curve this up and out like that. Now here, you want to create one little bump, so one little curve bit. When you get to about here, quickly turn this sharp up a little bit, so it sort of bends back up. Off the tip of that, just come back. Bring it back, and once you start hitting this line, I need to curve this back to a point, and from that point, just flick that up. For now, don't sort of like do nothing too harsh with this, just flick it up. And from here, where this line comes across here, so I carry this line through a touch, just really faintly, so you kind of get to your point, and then bring back a line coming back this way. And when you get to this curve here, you want to curve this down with this line, coming back. Right. And then just bring this line back up, sort of with that circle shape. Now what this does, this kind of gives you the position for the uh, where the eye is going to go. Because now we have this, and we have this curve here, we can just bend off of this curve up and kind of mimic this shape but a bit further up curve out like so off top of here just bring in a nice curve coming back leaving a little gap in between here you want to make sure there's a fair gap otherwise it looks like the eye is too close from here just curve this down so imagine there's a ball in the center of this just curve that bit there and follow this little line as if it was going through to join up with this and then just cut it off short about here and join up with this circle but and now just create your eye shape off top of the eye now where this eye curves here you're going to carry this through curve it round coming down to where the eye bit is like that so it goes up around and down very similar you want to do on the, on the bottom as well so we're going to bring this around curve up and come up with the eye you want to do it so you have this nice kind of V bit in between you don't want this to connect up with this what we're doing here is just breaking up the sections of the wolf you can add another one that's going to come roughly here 
and fit in this cab, but we're not going to do too much detail because it's going to connect up with the ear. It's just to separate that section. And the reason we didn't do this harsh is so we can make sure we had enough space to bring this bit back. Off the bottom, bring this back. Curve this down so it kind of touches this circle bit. You know, you don't want to bring it too far, far back, you want it sort of roughly in line with the eye. Somewhere along where the eye is. You don't want it to be far back here. So you don't want it to come to here. So just one look right. Unless you're going for some kind of monster looking wolf, you know, which it can be pretty cool. We're going to curve this. Once we get to about here, we're going to curve this down. Cut through the circle until we get to the edge. Once you get to the edge, that's where the line stops. And that just creates the initial mouth curve. This is going to flick off back in lines, which will do more to bend. Then we're going to curve the other way, and this line's going to flick out into lines like so. Which you'll see a lot more clearly with the pens. I'm going to show a couple of effects as well. We're going to do this all like separately. We're going to do like you know one thick, couple of small, one thick, couple of small to get this cool effect. But we'll just curve with this shape, and then have a secondary one coming in this space here, which will kind of flick up into the top of the head bit up there. Now around here I'm just going to create a few little curves just to kind of show the muscle of the mouth. Nothing too crazy. And I'm just going to create a few little furry bits. Just coming in now I think. Now we've got this, we can sort of go onto the teeth. Now where this curves here, bring your line back a little bit. And just create a dip. Like a little semicircle just coming back. Like so. See like that? Come there, underneath to there. Now what that is, that's your gum. You know, with a wolf and a growl, you see a lot of gum. If you don't have the gum there, it just doesn't look right. Now the teeth, we're going to do a couple of teardrop shapes at the front. And then here, you're going to have the canine. Canine is the big sharp tooth. Make sure the, you know, the canine is further back. You know, a lot of people might have mistaken putting the sharp tooth right at the front. It doesn't look right. That's not how a wolf's mouth works. So you want to bring that back here. Another little tooth in that gap just there. Gonna create a little curve here, just show a little bit of gum on the inside lip. Here I'm gonna have the canine tooth, just a little bit further back than what this one is. There, going into your front teeth. Now the tongue, I'm gonna have coming back from here, flicking up curved, coming back around. Yeah, you, know, you can do it anyhow you want, I just always generally do my tongues along that sort of line. Then the ear is going to go up to a point, curve down, and then where this curve is, you're going to take this and spin it around almost in a circle shape, and then come back up the other way. And it's going to create a few little bumpy bits just around the outside. That's the basic structure of the wolf head. Now we've done that, I'm going to pen it in. I'm going to use a thick sharpie for the beginning bit, and then I'm going to come in and do some fine, uh, fine line details. So we're just going to go over what we've done. Now take your time with this, I'm going to be pre pretty quick doing this. Don't feel like you have to pen it at the same speed as what I'm doing. Take your time and your wolf will look even better than mine. Now what I said about the uh, lines is going to do down here, so it's going to do a line flick. I'm going to space these a bit apart because you'll see when I come back I'm going to do like, you know, little thin ones in between to give it a cool effect. I'm going to curve this one back and do the same thing with these ones. Now for this kind of effect I'm making this end a little bit thicker. You can do it the other way as well, I just quite like it this way. And the further, these further, well, the further they are out, the longer I tend to make them, like see these ones are shorter. That's to show that the fur gets longer as it goes further back into the body. 
as it does on a real wolf. Next, we're looking for hints of realism, not complete realism, but hints. No, so it's hints that make you look at it and think, oh yeah, that's a wolf, not like looking at it and then thinking, mm, what is that? Curving those ones around. And those teeth. A little bit of gum. A little bit of gum. And a tongue. Now the rest is going to be fine line details. So I'm just going to come in with a thinner pen. If thinner with pencils, you know, just make your lines a bit thicker. If you've only got one line sort of thickness pen, just go over it twice. You know, and just thicken your line up. So I'm just going to bring in a few of these little, light, little bits. I'm just going to bring a set of little lines, like just here. Curve this in. Shape up with that. See, so just instant create. It's like a nice curve to the nose. You know, it's always worth playing around with this because you'll always find bits that work, and sometimes you can do things that you know are not going to work. Just going to bring a little line around here. Just certain little key areas. going to add some of these little lines so in between I'm just going to flick one or two lines whatever kind of fits in between each bit see draw the space from even apart just however many it takes to get so roughly where the other one is, then sort of squeeze in one if it doesn't quite fit. See? Now I'm just flicking mine in, but you know, take your time, get them right. I like to make them a little bit higher, a bit a little bit lower than the uh, outline. So you see, they come all the way there, and I make these ones a bit shorter. Detail just inside that ear. Here, I'm just going to bring in lines, just mimicking the shape of the first one just there. Then the tongue, I'm just going to bring in curve okay, just there. One coming off your chin, just curving back around, like so. Nothing too crazy. Have a little curve just there. A few little hair detail parts just to bring in some shape. And bring them up all side. You can make it cat's eye if you want. I like to make it more like that. I'll do a little highlight on the outside as well. Now you get your pencil, so I can give you an idea of where to put these whiskers and bits. You want to bring a curve line across this way, this way, this way. Yeah, I'm sitting along this line, so for this I'm just going to do black dots getting smaller as I go further back. If 
you want to come more across you can but I just prefer them being this kind of angle I'll just rub out that pencil work and you can see the wolf's head starting to build up now and at this point you can kind of see if there's anywhere places they need it like up here just a couple of little lines just to build in that space and you get a gist of it I mean you kind of like see here I'm just thinking nice curved coming just there okay I'm just there you kind of just look at it and you just kind of see certain areas that just need sometimes no, don't go too crazy below. You know, I said we're not going realistic. If you don't want it old school, just do it all in the same thickness. You know, for this like neo traditional look, just kind of mix it up a little bit. Now I'm just going to use, as I normally do, my faithful marker pens. You know, you can use paints, pencils, whatever you want. It's the exact same thing. You just change up how to use it. I'm flicking this black, come back off this nose bit, stopping at this line. I'm going to colour in the nose black, and to do that, I'm going to colour in up and just avoiding certain areas. I'm going to come there, flicking a little bit just here, and this bit I blend out in grey. Just now I've done that, it's going to get me darker grey. Now with markers I tend to always put my black in sort of like that, but then when I, when I do the greys, I use more of a side to side motion. So you get up and down. Just makes it easier to blend them out. See? Let's get a nice easy smooth transition this way. blend out now from this little bit down the bottom so you can kind of see now how these shapes we put in will come into effect it just helps me break down the colouring you know without having to colour the whole thing and make it all look like one big blob you know we can give them the hint of colour break it down Just gonna flick in a little bit from that side, a little bit from there, and put a little bit of black under this. When you get these little bits where it's just underneath, just flick it out. You know, don't come out too crazy. Just, just a little bit of black there, going into the grey. Now you want to blend these ones out quite quick. It's just corners are generally always an essential for shading. I want it quite harsh in this bit. I want this kind of grey strip just running over that head. I want this outside bits of the eye to be nice and white. corner bit now now from here and coming down around here I think but this is going to fade downwards so this is going to come out 
and fade off as it goes down as you'll see in a sec so that we're done it's going to bring in the side to side motion Like this grey coming up from over there. I think I'm just gonna darken up that bit as it goes towards the edge. Just like so. So you can really see it starting to build up now as it's starting to come into shape. It's going to put like a little white highlight, so it's like a little circle that will leave blank just there. Bring this in and just leave a little white edge just on this inside bit of the eye here. Just like so. On top of the eye, I'm just going to put a little shadow just over the top, under the bottom. Show you then this little bit of gum just here. Might go a bit dark with that gum, but I'll see in a minute as it heals, as it dries up. Just got to remember with markers, as they dry up, they go a lot brighter. So you can see that we're starting to dry there, sort of fades out to almost next to nothing. Just flicking this inside those hair parts. Blend this out a touch. Not too crazy. I want to leave a you know a nice little white section there to sort of show us the ear. Just looking a little bit of black. Not in too many areas, just a few little key areas. Look on the inside of the tongue. Coming a bit. Come in with your grease. Really blending them out. I'm changing up a little bit just on these spikes and just bringing out a bit more shade. Just to give a bit more of a sense of hair direction towards the back. Nothing too crazy though. Just 
looking at that grey. And two seconds of using a block marker. I remember why I don't use the block side. Brush marker is so much better. Checking it out just to blend smooth it out a little bit. Sometimes with markers you'll find if you use a, like say your lighter grey first, go over your darker grey and then go over again with the lighter, you can really easily blend it out sometimes, it just helps to push it a little bit. Sometimes you let it dry, just give it a second layer, makes you up a lot more. I'm going to do some white highlights, see if I can... Get enough sharp on. <laughs> My white pencil is almost gone. This is just a Prisma white pencil. It works really good on this paper. It's like very waxy, so that it draws over almost anything. That's Prisma. Prisma pencil. So it's going to put in some white highlights now. So just that little bit there where we've done left there, a little bit there. Just a little bit just under this rim. A little bit just close to this rim. Like so. It's a little bit to show some shape, so just one little bit there. Curve just there. A little just in this nose, so we're just going over that those lines we left. Just bringing out certain key areas. Just like there and there. A little bit just in that side of that gum. Tip of the tongue. Just gonna add the tongue a touch. No two grays on teeth, maybe it's like a little line just down. You can colour in pure white if you want, but I don't feel they always need to be pure white. A little bigger line just in the gum. Just around this lip edge. Just in those little curves there. One there. And just one coming down here. Now, if you see me do this a few times, I'm just going to put a white edge just around the front edge. I'm not going to go around this back edge, I don't think, just yet. I might change my mind once I've done this bit. This is just something you can do if you're using this kind of paper. You know, the tan craft paper. If you don't know where to get this, just go on Amazon. Just put in craft paper with a K, tan paper. This one's see white brighton, but there's so many different kind of makes. They're not expensive, it's nothing crazy. You know. I just used it one day and I thought, yeah, that looks pretty good. So I just kept on using it. But normal paper's fine, you know, you ain't got to use just colour paper. You know, you can get grey paper, you can use it on other colours, you can use it on white. Just using water paints, get yourself some watercolour paper. Make it work a million times better if you're using watercolour paper, water paints. Just play around with different materials, you know. I mean, God, the amount of different stuff I use in my pictures, I use mixed media all over the place. 
you know, I use paint, so I use my airbrush machine, I use my markers, pencils. I never just use one medium in my pictures, I use everything, you know. I don't see why not, you know, I mean, if something, if it works, you know, why stick to one medium? You know? Why should a picture have to be a pencil drawing and not a pencil drawing, painting, and everything mixed in one? Back here. Yeah, I quite like that. It brings it out. But yeah, that is how to draw a wall set side view. You can always colour it in, you can put like the red tongue, you know, yellow in the eyes, brown fur. I mean, I'll add a little bit, I'm not going to go too crazy here, you know, because it's near enough brown as it is, so it's kind of pointless. But if you add like the red tongue. Purple on the gun. This comes out more greyish, kind of purple, but it's a little subtle hint of colour. And, you know, colour for the eye, you know, let's say you go orange. You know, a little bit of colour can spice it up. But, yeah. That's everything you need to know for that. Hope you like it. Comment, subscribe, yada yada yada. Check out my videos. You know the routine. And I'll see you next time. Peace out.